Hey, it's Joe with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. This is the second episode of the X-Files expat interviews. So I'm here with my new friend and uh, Matthew. Matthew, how are you doing today? Good, really good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate well, we're it. We're so glad you agreed to this. We're going to put you under the bright lights and really grill you. I'm ready. <laughs> grill uh -huh. me to a crisp. Well, Matthew, if you could tell our viewers where you're from originally. I'm originally from the United States. Uh, I've lived mostly in Southern California, but in the last year I've also lived in Oregon and Washington. And in the past, I've lived in Pennsylvania, Texas, and New Mexico as well. So, but mostly Southern California. Wow, everybody got to be from somewhere, right? I'm from everywhere, evidently. <laughs> so how long have you been here in Ecuador? I've been here three months. I just got my visa and my cedula, so I'm good for the next year and nine months. Yay, okay. So you got what's called your temporary residency. Um, yes. Yeah, so you get the temporary residency, which is 22 months, and then uh, you'll apply for the permanent residency after that. That's my plan. So you're here for good. I'm here for good. I got a one-way ticket from the United States, having, having never been here, and I couldn't be happier. That's kind of a cool feeling, buying that one-way ticket, isn't it? It was great. It was <laughs> great. I, what's that song about, uh, that country song about looking at Lubbock in your rearview mirror? Well, Happiness you know, is Lubbock in the rearview mirror, yeah. Right. So substitute the U.S. for that, and you got how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, for us anyway, when, when we got ready to leave the U.S., we had four suitcases between the two of us, and um, we had everything we owned mm -hmm. in those four suitcases. We sold everything else. Wow. And just that feeling, uh, there's a little bit of apprehension because you're not sure what's coming next. Um, and uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of excitement for the new journey. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't have a lot of apprehension because I was so sick of the United States uh, that I figured it couldn't be any worse. And I was right. I got here and it, despite the, the things that you don't, you're not used to and the, the frustrations, they're mostly little frustrations. They're not big ones like, like I've had in the United States, like trying to find a, an affordable place for rent, which is almost impossible for artists like me that don't have high paying jobs. So uh, uh, plus I had a friend here in Vilcabamba that I had been in contact with and talking about maybe moving here for about a year or two. And I had been looking for several years before that around the world, but the cost, the minimum income requirement was so high everywhere that uh, Ecuador was one of the only places I could go to. But I had fr a friend here and, and friends that I corresponded to before I moved here uh, th through WhatsApp and, and through Facebook. So I already knew some people before I got here. So uh, it, it was a very easy transition for me. That helps to uh, already know people here. Um, we came here, we, we knew no one. <laughs> we just uh, rolled the dice and hoped we'd, wow. we'd love everybody. We had visited here. As a matter of fact, I, I tell the story that we actually, when we visited here, we looked at this house, even though it wasn't really on the market at that time. It was involved in a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, it'd be at least five years before we'd be able to move and this house would never be available. Mm -hmm. So we went back and just a God thing, everything fell into place. One year to the day, we were here in Vilcabamba, living here. Wow. And wow. two months later, we bought this house. This is a beautiful house. I've seen a lot of houses. This is one of the nicer ones. It's got beautiful gardens, and uh, you're very lucky. Well, to, thank to you. We're, this, so. we're completely blessed in our life, no doubt. So you mentioned some, some frustrations or difficulties. Anything in particular come to mind in your, your journey here? They're mostly small ones, like uh, order, ordering a cup of coffee when you're the only one in the restaurant and it taking a half an hour to get to your table. <laughs> um, I, I found out since then that evidently, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, Ecuadorians drink their coffee after their meal. So they tend to serve it with the meal so you can drink it after 
So if you want coffee before your meal, you have to request it uh, before the meal. That, that's something I didn't know. Uh, what other little things? Uh, the the apartments and, and people I know who have houses often complain about the plumbing and the electricity. Uh, in Ecuador, they tend to jerry-rig things uh, because they it's a poor country. They don't have the resources. They, don't, they can't afford uh, everything. So they'll do things as easy as possible. So, uh, for instance, the, the light switches in my apartment, um, they go horizontal. So it's not like up or down that we're, we're used to in the United States, but they're horizontal. And there's no way of really intuitively knowing whether left is on or left is off and right is on or right is off. So I tested all the light switches in my apartment and left is on half of the time and the other switches, it's off. So there's, they, there's no often rhyme or reason why they do certain things. Uh, the sink in my bathroom has, has a, a ledge right where your forehead would hit if you want to spit out water from rinsing your mouth out. So, so I have to kind of duck and then put my head over the sink so I don't hit my head on the shelf. So they don't always think ergonomically or uh, of the little things. Um, but uh, there's other places that are just beautifully built. It's, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot. But uh, they do the best that they can, and uh, and I'm and with the price that you pay for an apartment here, you can't complain about anything. I don't have hot water in my kitchen. Uh, there's other th things that that don't work quite well enough. But for what I'm paying, I'm really happy, and I don't have any problem with the little things. So, and and things like hot water in the kitchen can be rectified fairly easily here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to do a video about uh, calipones and tankless water heaters and mm -hmm. things um, coming up. I think that'd be a good topic to cover. There's, there's this, that we found the same thing. Then, and we have in this house, we have some vertical light switches with a horizontal right next to it, yeah. and two switches on here. One of them's not connected to anything, unless one of my neighbors is going. Who keeps turning my light on? And on? <laughs> I don't know where that switch goes to. Maybe it goes to somebody in government. I don't know. <laughs> well, when you see all the the, the cords going from the telephone wires, you, you wonder where each of those cords go to because there's a lot of them. It's, it's a kind of an eyesore. You get used to it, but that's the way they do things here. So. I have some training in residential electricity, and uh, some of the wiring I've seen here has been Darn right, scary. <laughs> yeah, I know. My, uh, I, I had a housemate for three weeks who's a builder, a professional builder from Canada, and he looked at my shower and he said, "Oh my God, you got a suicide shower! They're running electric cables right into the shower head," and, and I told him, "Well, I've been here two months and I haven't been electrocuted, and uh, evidently they do things differently here and." Uh, but and I haven't heard of anybody getting electrocuted from those suicide showers. So. No, it doesn't happen. I don't know anybody yeah. that's had a problem with that. But they do yeah. sell them here, and it, yeah. it's it's if you don't want to install a tankless water heater, you can put one of these on the shower head, and yeah. it plugs in, and then you get instant hot water for your yeah. shower. You yeah, know. if the shoe ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm I'm not going to complain. It works. So. Yeah, it you know that's just kind of life here in Ecuador. You just go with the flow so to yeah, speak right right yeah. a lot of different things little little tiny different things i remember when i first wanted to take a shower i'm turning the the knob left and right and and nothing happened so i called my landlord i said i think my shower's broke so she comes up and she says no this is how you turn it on and you would never guess in a million years how it turns on you don't turn the knob left or right you push the whole knob up. <laughs> I and, haven't seen that. And then, and then turn the knob left and right to get your hot or, or cold water. Yeah, I've, ne I've never, and, and it's a small knob that's like right in the wall. You wouldn't think that put, pushing the whole knob up would turn the water on. 
<laughs> so that was a surprise to me. And um, live and learn. It's one of those things. Yeah. So, Matthew, your family and friends in the U.S., what did they think about you moving here to Ecuador? Uh, I, they're... I don't know really what they think. I think I think overall they're happy for me that I've found a place that I like. I think they're happy for me. Uh, they might not understand all the reasons I came down here, but uh, but they're happy for me. Um, we we don't have a lot in common as far as our outlook on the world and what's happening. Uh, my entire family both. My, my mom and my brother and, and my uh, ex-wife and my kids, they all do not like talking about anything that has any controversy. Uh, <clears throat> but that's okay. I mean, most of my friends in the United States are like that. It's, it's, it seems to be really indicative of the people of that country for some reason. I don't really understand why. I've, I've never had a problem talking about anything if I can learn something new or whether it's controversial or not it doesn't you know uh, doesn't bother me but uh, evidently it bothers a lot of people including my entire family tree <laughs> but that's okay I still love them and and, uh, and we get along great so well and if they'll come down here and visit um, and experience the relaxation here and the mm -hmm. just much slower paced lifestyle um, they'll they'll probably have great insights into why you live here, and uh, they probably would. Um, see, that's a good incentive for you guys to come visit me. There so, you go. Yeah, I had a, a friend of mine uh, who emailed me a couple years ago, who said, um, you know, when you first moved down to Ecuador, all of us guys were thinking you were a fool, and he said, now we think you're the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> uh, Oops. Is but that a uh, bird? Oh no! Oh, it's probably a raindrop. <laughs> yeah, probably. Sometimes it does that here. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, you know everybody's different, mm -hmm. but um, we just enjoy it so much here. And this is one of the great things about Bill Kabamba. There's always people downtown who are willing to talk about any subject with you. Yeah, and, that's uh, one of the things I love about this place. People, the expats down here, are are here purposely and deliberately. They've They've really thought about it. Generally, they they didn't just move for work or for for. Uh, they've really put a lot of thought into it, and a uh, lot of interesting people in this town with really interesting stories. That uh, and a lot of talent in this town. A lot of talented oh, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, musical talent. Writers live in this town. We have. Uh, movie producers who live in this town. We have um, just lots of, of really good talent here. And, of course, a lot of healthcare professionals and uh, pseudo-professional, if you would. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a lot of unique, different people. Yeah, it's a, it's a small town and, and a lot of talented people. And you get to know just about all of them because you, you can't walk two blocks to the nearest tienda without bumping into two or three people that you know and, and chatting. I, I remember a friend of mine were, uh, and I were going to get a cup of coffee, which was two blocks away, I think two or three blocks away. And it took us two hours to get there <laughs> because we kept bumping into people that we just had to talk to that, that were in our lives and we were involved with the various projects with and, uh, uh, so that's the way it goes sometimes. So, the social aspect here is big. Yeah, yeah I, I met yeah. one one uh, expat here who who eats indoors in this cafe where nobody can see her, and and she does that because if she's outside, she never gets to eat her meal because everybody's saying hello, and she ne so you know to each his own, I guess. Yeah, there's you know there's probably I don't know the numbers vary, but there's probably Three to four hundred uh, expats here in Vilcabamba. Oh um, no, I think there's. You think more? I think there's a lot more. I've I've heard there's a couple thousand. I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Know. I don't know. You maybe know. in the whole surrounding area. 
Yeah, maybe um, in the whole surrounding I know Cuenca area. has like 8,000 yeah. expats in Cuenca. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here, yeah, whatever the number yeah. is, it. but there's yeah. a good amount of people here that are, uh, yeah. you know, it's like one big family, though. Yeah, yeah it is. You get to, I have more friends, more close friends here than I have in any city I've, I've lived in in the United States. And then a whole bunch of more acquaintances. So it's, it really does feel like a family. But, you know, with any family, we all have that weird Uncle Al nobody wants to talk to. Right, right. <laughs> they're there. They're there. So. Uh, well, what recommendation would you, would you have for people who are thinking about, you know, possibly relocating to another country? Well, just I, I would say do all the research you possibly can. Get to know as much about where you're li- going to live as possible and know that once you get there nothing you've learned will really totally prepare you there'll always be surprises that that you will never have known uh good and bad uh and and get all your paperwork done before you get here um it it took me once i got here it took me three months to get my visa and my cedula but that was because I had all the, the required paperwork for my visa once I stepped off the plane and gave it to my uh, immigration attorney. So uh, if you had to do, get any of your paperwork while you're here, it could take... I, I know people who've been here over a year and they don't have their visa or their cedula because they couldn't get all their paperwork done before they got here. That's really important. Um, and and just just do as much research as you can and uh, and look forward to a great adventure. I think um, an exploratory trip is always good. And uh, if you can afford one, I think that's a good idea. I couldn't, yeah. so I flew by the seat of my pants. I got a one-way ticket here, having never been here. But I talked to a friend that lives here many, many, many times over the period of about a year and a half. And so I, she warned me about a lot of things and helped me prepare. So that was in, really invaluable, having somebody here, living here, who knows uh, the area and can give you advice. Absolutely. And, and reach out to us. We can put you in touch with the right visa facilitator. So that aspect of it will go as smooth as possibly can. And, uh, you know, we always say here, tranquilo, mm-hmm. just, just, just be relaxed about it. It'll, it's all going to happen, and it all falls into place. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's a little more difficult for some people with different situations, but um, our, our friend, she, she made that as painless as possible for us, and it was really a pretty smooth process. No need to be anxious. You know, we, we looked at a lot of countries, and uh, I, we're very familiar with Mexico, and I spent a lot of time in Mexico. Um, but Mexico has, it used to be you could live there illegally, mm-hmm. what we would call irregular in this country. Mm-hmm. But now Mexico's tightened that up, and they're not, they're not being so forgiving about that anymore, and the entry requirements are a lot more expensive. Um, so uh, most of your Central American countries have upped that level for what a requirement to uh, to expatriate into their country, so um, yeah, it's, it's, Ecuador is still reasonable. There are some South American countries that might be a little bit more reasonable than Ecuador, but um, we just really like it here. This is where we're supposed to be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I looked into Mexico and to some of the other South American countries, and uh, I always ran into dead ends. But when I investigated Ecuador. It just, everything seemed to work. Uh, everything I was looking for was here. So, Well, we're glad you're here, Matthew. Thank Welcome you. to the family. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. I, I love being here. Well, thank you all for watching today. We're always so humbled by um, the, the wonderful comments that you make, and we thank you so much for subscribing. We hope today that you enjoyed it. You'll give us a thumbs up. God bless. We'll see you soon. Take care.